Hello fellow tryhards, it's Mad Buddha here. Today I'm bringing you my guide for Gul'dan, Darkness Incarnate. <laughs> Gul'dan is an assassin class character in Heroes of the Storm, and can dish out a significant amount of damage with his spells. But I'm not here to tell you the basics of Gul'dan, I want to tell you how to play him effectively and efficiently in your games. Let's start with builds, shall we? Gul'dan has two major build paths, a Fell Flame line, and a Corruption line. First, let's look at the Fell Flame line. The Fell Flame build for Gul'dan offers incredible wave clear and significant damage. However, because the spell doesn't reach very far, it sees its greatest potential either on maps where wave clear is extremely important or against melee heavy compositions. There is also the Corruption line. The Corruption build is for massive AoE damage and is also great against ranged characters or in situations where you simply need a bit more reach. For both builds at level 13, Fell Armor and Hellstone are both great choices. Another thing worth noting is that I only recommend taking Horrify for your level 10 ultimate skill. Horrify is one of the best skills in the game and can single-handedly win every teamfight for your team. Reign of Destruction is completely RNG. You have no control over where the meteors will fall. If you do hit your reign, it's tremendous and powerful, and if you do insist on taking it, then I've listed here a few talents that I th think you should take to troll your friends. However, I do only recommend taking rain when you want to troll your friends, and not when you want to try and win a competitive match of Heroes of the Storm. For level 20, I always recommend Demonic Circle. Demonic Circle is an incredible talent. However, if you're not feeling confident in Demonic Circle, or you're feeling super confident about your ability to position well and stay alive in fights, then Demonic Circle is not necessary. In this case, I would of course recommend upgrading whichever ultimate you took. The early game is all about stacking that quest, baby, stacking that quest, stacking that quest. No matter which quest you take, and no matter what character you're playing if you're taking a stacking quest, it's always imperative that you get it filled up as quickly as possible. The faster you can get your quest fully stacked and max out the efficiency of your character means the more that you can do as a carry in your games towards winning the game for your team. Typically, the first team to get their quest stacked over the other team has absolutely massive advantage in early team fights, and those are the most crucial team fights to snowballing any game in your favor. The mid and late game Gul'dan is all about controlling minion waves for your team defensively and dishing out huge damage in team fights. Gul'dan has incredible wave clear no matter which build path you took. So if you see a large group of minions assaulting one of your defensive structures, it's your job to get back there and take care of it. Once every minion wave is in your advantage, it's time for a fight. Or of course, if there's just nukes on the field, you're probably going to want to fight over this. When your team fight is Gul'dan, it's about staying in the back and dishing out damage. You never want to step too aggressively because you're really easy to lock down, and with your low health pool, you're also really easy to blow up. Gul'dan is a damage over time character, meaning that in order to win a fight, particularly if you're facing a composition with a lot of healing, it's gonna take a little while. Feel okay about playing Gul'dan on maps where you have a lot of time to fight it out. And that's all you need to know to play a great Gul'dan. I hope you enjoyed this video, I definitely had a blast making it, and may you forever smash your solo queue games. This has been Mad Buddha, over and out.